Well, as I had expected, I got quite a few requests to do a walk around video of my new truck, or new to me truck, I should say. And uh, for the first time in a couple months, I actually had the opportunity to wash it, you know, clean it up and make it shine this past weekend. So I figured I might as well take the opportunity to make a video now before uh, it gets all covered in silt and horse crap from these wonderful Lancaster County roads. Um, so without further ado, this is going to be an in-depth review of my 2000 Ford F-250 Super Duty XLT. So uh, to backtrack a little bit, uh, those of you who have followed my channel for a while, or for ex an extended period of time, I guess, uh, you know that for the longest time I was running a 2000 model year Ford F-150 XLT, um, which was actually spec'd somewhat similar to this one, even down to the color. Um, I bought that truck when I was in high school. It was my first official vehicle, and uh, I got plenty of good use out of it in the years I had it. I've kind of, you know, pushed it past its limits a few times, and, uh, you know, it served me well, but I, I never really had an attachment to it. Um, for the longest time, basically ever since I was a little kid, I wanted one of these, I guess you call them the first generation Super Duty trucks. Uh, my uncle had one, he had a 2000 model year F350 dually, power stroke diesel. Uh, that was his race car hauler and his work truck. And uh, I remember that truck as a little kid and just the sound of that 7.3 liter engine and uh, just the styling, the overall styling of that truck, you know, it was something that stuck with me for a long time. Then he traded it in on a 2005 dually with the six liter power stroke, which is a different story. Um, but. The bottom line is I always had a soft spot for these trucks and you can look, you know, go out on the road, you just see how many of these trucks are still out there running around, you know, 20 plus years later. Um, I'm of the opinion that these first generation Super Duties were some of the best trucks that Ford ever built. Uh, like I said, the numbers of these trucks that were built, the reputation they had, and the number that you still see running around on the road so many years later just proves it. Um, so for the longest time I wanted one of these and when I first got my license, you know, going on 10 years ago, I wanted, uh, I wanted to purchase one of these from the start, but at the time it just seemed impractical and they were all out of my budget. So I got the 2000 F-150 and that held me off for a good while, but once I moved out here to my own place and started upgrading equipment, got a bigger trailer, I obviously needed a bigger truck to pull it. So the time for that old blue truck was short and uh, I started searching for a Super Duty. And uh, this truck has the 7.3 liter power stroke diesel, which is a 444 cubic inch turbo diesel V8 uh, built by International Navistar. They're, you know, they have a reputation of being one of the more reliable diesel V8s put in pickups, especially the Fords. And uh, they're not much of a powerhouse by today's standards. Nothing fancy, no, no crazy frills. Um, but I just wanted something modest, something that would be overall pretty reliable and easy to maintain for the most part, you know, no fancy electronics, but I also didn't want something that was too primitive either. Um, you know, the old diesel engines, I think, uh, such as the IDIs and the old Detroits, uh, safe to say they were pretty primitive, especially for a pickup truck that uh, I was gonna be daily driving. So I wanted kind of a happy medium, and I think that the first generation Super Duties, 99 to 03 or 04 were uh, the epitome of that. You know, they were, comfortable trucks built really solidly they look good and they had pretty much bulletproof powertrains in them so that's to make a long story short that's the reason i wanted a first generation super duty um, and i specifically wanted the power stroke diesel the 7.3 because like i said they have a reputation for being very reliable um, they're simple compared to some of the newer engines and they just run you know, it's not a powerhouse by any means. Uh, it's rated for a maximum of 235 horsepower at about 2,600 RPM and about 500 foot-pounds of torque at 1,800 RPM. Like I said, not a powerhouse by any means, but, you know, it's a modest, you know, modest tow rig and uh, should last a long time. So I've been doing my research the last couple of years, just uh, kind of studying up on these particular trucks, learning uh, what things to look out for with them in the long run, uh, what things to look out for when you're purchasing one, uh, and also looking into some you know worthwhile long-term upgrades, especially for the uh, the 7.3 liter engine. Um, like I said, I'm 
of the belief that these were some of the best trucks Ford ever built and I'm gonna do my best to make this thing last as long as I can now being you know a 20 plus year old truck of course it's not going to be perfect i was not looking for something in mint condition i was not looking for something that was going to be you know problematic either i did not want to buy a rusted out you know beater so i feel like this truck here is a good medium uh it was pretty well maintained uh i bought it off of a an older couple that had owned it since 2004 and the story i got was that this truck was originally ordered and spec'd out for a contractor fleet uh, it was originally ordered or to be used to plow snow and it was set up to plow snow it did have a front plow mount on it at one point but i believe they use it as a spare um, because the plow mount came off after just a couple years and judging by you know the frame and the undercarriage and whatnot it's actually pretty clean and solid so the original contracting company bought it in 2000 uh, then the couple i bought it from bought it in 2004 and they used it, like I said, they used it just to tow their camper and their boat for, you know, almost 20 years. And they had it maintained by their local small town mechanic every year. And they said anything that was wrong with it, they always had fixed. And they were on top of maintenance with it. And uh, judging by the car facts, that certainly seemed true. Um, in more recent years, you know, they were getting up there in age. Uh, they could, the, the husband his health was declining he couldn't climb up in it anymore and he just didn't want to drive stick anymore so they decided to let it go and uh they just so happened to live across the street from my buddy jake who we call pat in our group chat and uh at the time uh, so this would be october of last year about nine months ago i was really heavily searching for one of these trucks and i put the word out to a couple friends and said hey you know, if you if you happen to come across any 7.3s with the ZF6, you know, extended cab, eight foot bed, four wheel drive, let me know. And sure enough, Jake, uh, he sent a message back. He said, "Yeah, my neighbor just put one up across the street, you know, for sale." And uh, he sent me a picture of the uh, flyer that they had taped up in the window, which just had the specs on the truck. Uh, but he did not send a picture of the truck. So I took a drive down after work one evening to take a look at it. And I was, honestly, I was expecting it to be kind of a wore out piece of junk. It was down in this holler, you know, down in the woods, way off the beaten path. And, you know, I came around the corner there in the woods. And uh, when I pulled up, it was sitting at the end of their driveway. And sure enough, it was uh, pretty much exactly what I was looking for. Um, so I looked it over. Uh, then I came back a couple days later with my friend Jimmy and my friend Carl, who were resident Ford experts. And uh, after looking it over and you know verifying that it was mechanically sound, I made him an offer. I made the the couple an offer and uh, drove it home. It was you know it made me glad to know that they had it maintained and that they used it specifically as a tow rig because that's pretty much exactly what I bought it for. I wasn't looking for anything fancy, like I said, you know nothing nothing too high end or too expensive either and uh, this is a good happy medium for me and it's honestly in great shape for uh, for the age and considering what they used it for and also considering that it is a northern truck you know most of them are rusted out beat to hell at this point in their lives but uh, for being almost 23 years old you know this is the only major rust that it has on it right here in this you know wheel well um, usually you know at this point you see the whole wheel well rusted out with these trucks and uh, there's also a little bit of rust on the rocker panels, nothing too significant. Uh, that's also pretty typical with these. It wouldn't be too difficult to, you know, cut the piece out and spot weld the new piece in. Uh, I do plan to have that done down the road, but it's not a priority for me because, like I said, this is not a show truck by any means. So it's, you know, going to be put to work. Um, if we look at the frame, you can see that there is a little bit of surface rust here and there, but a, a good portion of the original paint is still there and still intact, and the frame is not rotted through anywhere on this truck, which was a huge plus. I was actually very surprised when I, the first time I crawled under it and took a look. I mean, you can see, for the most part, it is pretty clean. It hasn't seen a whole lot of salt, and, you know, underneath the cab is pretty solid. Underneath the bed is fairly solid. Um, so that was a huge plus and uh, i was very excited to see that and it's it's i'd say it's just about the right amount of wear and tear uh for what i'm you know what i was looking for this has this uh four firestone destination all-terrain tires on the 17 inch alloy wheels which are you know typical for the um, xlt trim package um, these also have the manual locking front hubs 
which are handy because they're simple. Uh, I prefer the manual locking hubs over the vacuum powered ones because in my opinion, that's just more to go wrong. Uh, these tires here up front, the steer tires were put on within the last three years. The drive tires were put on about five years ago. And as you can see, they're starting to get pretty worn. So I will have to replace these pretty soon. I mean, they're, they're pretty flat in the center. I'm probably gonna run them until fall and then switch them out. Um, other than that, the truck is basically stock. Um, as you can see, overall, it's in pretty good shape, I think. You know, not 100% perfect cosmetically, but it's good enough for what I need. Uh, it has the, what I believe are factory Ford Nerf bars or running boards, but you can see the powder coats peeling off and the little plastic clips or tabs that hold the step pads in place are all broke. So um, these do not like to stay in place. So I'm gonna see if I can either glue these in place or replace them with new ones. And I do eventually plan to sandblast these and actually have them coated in uh, bed liner. Um, like I said, with the Lancaster County roads between the the horse crap all over the roads and then the salt that they put on the roads in the winter time i mean that's just cause going to be cause for corrosion and rust you can see there's a little bit starting back here already um so i am planning to have these coated and protected and i might do the rest of the frame at some point in the future but not anytime soon that'll come uh, but like I said, there's really no significant rust on this truck. Just a little bit on the, you know, a little bit of surface rust on the frame rails. Uh, you can see the one shock tower is definitely going to need to be replaced. That's pretty crusty. Um, but other than that, it's not too bad. It's really not bad compared to some of the, the junkers I was looking at. You can see it still has the factory tow mirrors. Uh, I don't know why you would order anything larger than a half ton truck without tow mirrors, but I have seen a handful of them with just the basic mirrors. Um, the mirrors are in decent shape. The one on the other side does have a crack under here. I guess they may have hit a tree branch with it at one point. Um, I'll probably keep them for now, but in the future I would like to upgrade them to the, uh, the version that had the LED turn signal built in. I don't need power adjust or heat or anything like that. That's little fancier than what I'm looking for, um, but they'll do for now. Again, this truck is an extended cab, so it's got, you know, you have your main door, then you have your little half door here. And in typical Ford uh, fashion, this door does not open. Um, that, what happens with these Ford extended cabs is, it's not that the cable breaks, but the little uh, stopper on the end of the door cable pops out of the bracket for the latch, because um, they're just cheap rubber, so they wear out over time. Um, and then what happens is, when that pops out of the latch, then the entire cable moves when you pull the handle. So there's nothing to actually uh, open the door. Um, I had that problem with my F-150 as well, and I did replace those cable ends with the replacement metal ones from AutoZone. So I do plan to do that on this truck as well, uh, whenever I get a couple minutes to do it. But for right now, I'm, I have no problem just reaching behind the, reaching behind the door here. Um, but that is on the list. As you can see, this truck has the charcoal gray interior, or graphite, I guess I should say, medium graphite. Um, so it's in good condition. It's, you know, for the miles and the age of the truck, it's one of the better gray interiors that I've seen. This truck currently has just under 188,000 miles. Um, it had just under 179,000 miles when I bought it. So in nine months, I've put just about 9,000 miles on it, a little bit less. So roughly 1,000 miles a month. And that's, I'd say it's a pretty even mix of highway and, um, you know, back roads driving. Uh, but as you can see, the interior is in pretty solid condition overall. You know, no frills. Like I said, I didn't want anything crazy. Um, the Lariat package trucks seem to be bringing ridiculous money. And I was not, you know, I did not want to pay up for a Lariat. I didn't really need those features anyway. It's plain and simple. It's ju just enough frills for me. Um, like I said, this has the ZF6 manual transmission, which is built by zf german company it's rated for 650 foot pounds of torque and uh these are pretty desirable uh you know good clean you know mostly rust free 7.3 trucks with the zf6 are getting hard to find and uh i just wanted to change things up i wanted to get away from an automatic you will notice this truck also has the floor mounted uh shift for the four-wheel drive um I prefer that over the electronic shift on the fly, which is the knob that would be on the dash right here. Um, I've heard a lot of nightmares with those. They break at the worst possible time. And being electronic, it's another thing to go wrong. But this is plain and simple. It's all mechanical, easy to shift in and out. Um, that was a, also a must for me. So finding a truck with the ZF6 and the manual floor shift was a huge plus. Like I said, the couple that I bought it from used this truck for towing. So they wired up a brake controller and... Uh, 
the brake controller works pretty well i think um i've towed so far the heaviest thing i've towed with this truck is a john deere 60 which weighs around 55 to 5700 pounds and uh, this truck pulled it pretty well i think i think that trailer is a good size for it they seem to work out really well uh like i said the interior is in pretty good condition overall this has the uh, captain's chairs or bucket seats as you can see which are both in very nice condition it also has the center console which I honestly cannot say that I am a fan of I do not think these belong in trucks personally I do plan to switch out the whole front row of seats with a 40 20 40 seat with the uh, the center jump seat with the fold down back and I'm hoping within the next couple months here if I can find a decent set of seats to trade uh, I'll get that swapped out so this center console is going to go um, I did also have to replace the uh, cup holder here. The pla what happens is the plastic gets brittle and breaks. That was broken when I got it. Um, one thing I like about these early Super Duty trucks is the dashes are very solid. They very rarely if ever break or crack or come loose, and this one's in very good shape. Um, and everything is easy, easily accessible. You know, easy to service. Here's a view of the interior from the passenger side. Uh, like I said, the interior is in really good condition. The seats are not bad at all, uh, but I will be changing out that front row here shortly. Um, it came with these crappy, thin, flimsy rubber floor mats that really don't even fit the cab floor very well. Um, I mean, they're okay. They get the job done, but I am planning to upgrade them to a set of uh, WeatherTech floor mats, the big heavy-duty ones. I have a set of those in my 2010 F-150, and I'm very impressed with them. And for a truck like this that I'm constantly getting in and out of, especially with muddy boots, uh, I think those WeatherTech mats are hard to beat. So this truck will be getting those in the future. Um, you can see it's got the rubber mats in the back as well. Uh, the only thing I've really done to the interior, aside from replace that ashtray or uh, cup holder there, is I added an underseat storage tray. Uh, I am a fan of these over having a toolbox in the bed because having a toolbox takes up a lot of real estate in the bed. And uh, this... These Duha underseat storage trays are really handy because you can fit a lot of stuff in them and it's completely protected by the seat. So I have my you know tow chain, you know, ratchet straps, jump pack, um, jumper cables, and a couple other things in here, you know, just little odds and ends. I have I've had one of these in every truck I've owned and I highly recommend them. Even my Dodge work truck has one of those in it. Um, like I said, it's nice having uh, or nice being able to use that underseat space instead of having to take up real estate in the bed. If you look at the headliner, you can see that there's no signs of leakage, no stains of any kind, no rips or tears or holes or anything like that, which is a good sign that indicates that the uh, the windshield never leaked, which I know is a common issue with these trucks. And it looks like the original back glass is still sealed pretty well. Um, it does have the manual sliding rear window. I just rarely ever reach back there to open it. Um, I'd rather have manual than automatic anyway. Just automatic's just more to go wrong in my opinion. Um, but like I said, the interior overall is in very good condition. I did forget to mention that the previous owners did smoke in this thing, but uh, I can tell they were careful with it because there's no burn marks in the seat or um, you know in the interior anywhere. And the smell uh, was honestly not too bad. I seem to have gotten rid of most of it at this point. But uh, I'd say for the age of the truck, and given that it has only you know ever been used for towing and whatnot, I, th I think it's it's pretty clean overall uh, i really can't complain i did think about swapping out the carpet for a vinyl floor but i'm at this point i'm not sure if i want to go that route or not but it will definitely be getting the seats upgraded as well as the floor mats if we come around to the bed you can see that it does have you know the typical wear and tear being that the truck is 22 almost 23 years old and uh, the elderly couple i bought it from did say that they used to load the bed of this truck with all their you know camping equipment and fishing equipment and whatnot when they would be towing their camper or their boat so it definitely uh this bed has definitely been filled to its limit before and i have even in the short couple months i've had it i have had this thing loaded pretty full as well overall the bed's not in bad shape though i mean aside from the couple of rust spots that i showed on the wheel well um there's you know, a couple little holes and whatnot seams that need to be re-welded um see some rust holes there but like i said nothing that a little welding couldn't fix i am planning to patch those spots up and then i will have a line x spray and bed liner installed that's another must have for these trucks in my opinion uh, the line x is very durable so i am planning to uh get that done here in the next couple months once i find the time to get the, the bed all patched up uh, one other interesting thing i think i ought to note if you didn't notice it already 
At some point, they replaced the original bed rails. I guess the bed rails had rusted out, and they used pieces of oak, which I have no idea how that will pass a state inspection, but it seems to be holding up pretty well. Um, I mean, oak is a pretty strong wood, but uh, at some point in the future, I will definitely be replacing those with the correct steel bed rails once again. Um, I just thought that was kind of funny, and they did make a note of that um, when I went to go look at the truck originally, but... Uh, I guess at some point that means the bed will have to come off. I'll replace the bed rails. I'll probably undercoat it, you know, patch up all the, the holes and whatnot. Um, and, you know, given the age of the truck, like I said, the bed's really not in bad shape. Um, definitely one of the better ones I've seen. And uh, the tailgate could use some new bushings as well for the hinge point. You can see that's all loose and sloppy. But, you know what? It's a work truck. It's going to get used. It's going to get worn. So, that's to be expected. This truck has the Dana 50 solid front axle. You can see there's our transfer case. And then it has the 373 rear axle, which is standard in all of the non-dually F250s and F350s as far as I know. And I have seen a handful of these trucks that have disc brakes on the front and drum on the rear, but this one appears to have uh, discs all the way around. So I guess that's a, that's a plus. Um, and if you look up inside the frame rails, you can see that there's very little rust. I know it's hard to see. The lighting is not that great, but the frame rails are very solid. Uh, like I said, as far as the body goes, I mean, aside from the wheel well rust, this is the only other major rust all up in here, rocker panels. And I do plan to get that fixed someday in the future, so no worries there. It's not definitely not the worst I've seen. Um, overall, this truck is pretty solid underneath, and I really can't complain. You'll also see that this truck is still running the stock exhaust. Um, that probably won't last too much longer. I am planning to upgrade to a five inch turbo back stainless steel kit, uh, probably an MBRP kit. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with their quality. And uh, that'll be coming you know, at some point here, hopefully in the near future. Uh, along with that, I am also planning to upgrade the air intake system. Uh, speaking of the air intake, I know I've been talking long enough here. Let's uh, pop the hood and I'll show you the engine. So here it is, the uh, legendary 7.3 liter engine. Um, this is basically Ford's version of the International Navistar T444E diesel engine, which was used in a lot of medium duty trucks, uh, ambulances, buses, and whatnot. Um, Ford just kind of changed, as far as I know, they changed the programming, you know, the injection timing and the, uh, the governor may be a little bit different as well, but it's the same basic engine. Again, it's a 444 cubic inch turbocharged direct injected V8. Um, these engines have a Garrett 38 millimeter turbo stock from the factory. Um, that's still running the original turbos you can see. And like most of them, uh, I do have quite a few oil leaks back there. You can see there's a good bit of oil buildup on the firewall. Uh, I do eventually plan to upgrade that turbo. Uh, I have a pretty good list of upgrades I'm planning to do to this truck in the long run, not anytime soon. Um, you know, I don't want to I don't want to mod this truck to the point that it's going to make too much power and not going to be able to handle it. I just want to get, I want to squeeze a little bit more juice out of it so I have a little bit more oomph to pull the trailer. Um, so that'll come, you know, over the next couple years. I do have some upgrades I'm planning to do to it. So I'm, right now I'm planning to do the KC300 uh, turbo upgrade with the Wicked Wheel. Um, I'm also planning to upgrade the injectors as the stock injectors are starting to go. I have a bit of a misfire sometimes and uh, we did a buzz test on the injectors and some of them are coming back a little bit weak. So uh, as far as I know this truck is still running the original injectors, the split shot injectors. I'm planning to put a set of single shot injectors in it, maybe 160 over 30s. Uh, not 100% sure on that yet. But like I said, I'm not looking to make a ridiculous amount of power. Just want to give it a little extra kick. Um, and with that, Again, planning to do the KC300 turbo upgrade with the billeted up pipes. Um, just kind of really go over everything. Probably replace the harnesses under the valve cover, or valve covers, I should say. And uh, you'll notice it's also using a K&N cold air intake. I use that term loosely uh, because, in my opinion, I don't see how you can call this a cold air intake when the filter is literally sucking in all of the hot air from the <laughs> engine compartment. Um, I really think they're a scam if I'm being completely honest, but uh, this was on the truck when I bought it. Uh, given the choice, I would not have installed it, but I'm going to be taking it off eventually and replacing it with a extended life uh, severe service filter, um, the original Ford kit. So I am planning to uh, get rid of this eventually. And then the same, probably the same time I do that swap, I'm also going to uh, do the exhaust as well. Um, but the engine runs great as it is. Um, like I said, the 
I do have a little bit of an injector miss from time to time, and uh, sometimes it will smoke a little bit uh, because of that, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, overall, the engine is pretty solid, aside from the leaks back there around the turbo and the, the pedestal especially. Um, it's pretty clean. Uh, they did have a new water pump installed and a new belt installed before I bought the truck, so that's taken care of. And they also had two new batteries put in it about a year before I bought it, so those should be taken care of. And uh, overall, I mean, the engine compartment's pretty clean. Uh, I haven't really noticed anything alarming and haven't noticed any unusual noises, so it seems to be pretty healthy for the most part. I've done three oil changes on it so far just to kind of flush the old oil out of the system and make sure I'm running good quality motorcraft oil as per Ford's recommendations. Um, not here to argue what kind of oil to run, but uh, that's just what I've stuck with, and the engine does seem to be a little bit happier with that motorcraft oil in it, so I can't complain. So enough chit-chat. Uh, let's climb up in the cab, and we'll start this thing up. This is not going to be a cold start by any means. Uh, I have been running this truck back and forth to and from work, and the engine should still be pretty warm, so uh, we'll get her fired up here nonetheless. Make sure we're in neutral. Don't mind the ABS light, I have a bad wheel sensor. Uh, I am going to replace that. Look at that thing torquing back and forth inside the frame. I mean, it just sounds like pure Americana. Just yesterday when I was cleaning the truck, I also polished up the original headlights. I think they turned, pretty, turned out pretty good. Um, they were looking pretty yellow before, but they cleaned up really well. The engine just has a little bit of blow by, but given the age and the miles on the truck, you know, I think that's to be expected. I'll show you here. Not the worst I've seen. For the record, yes, I do have one of the uh, lights out there. I am going to replace that. It's on the list. So let's try something a little different here. Uh, while we still have some daylight here, why don't we uh, take her for a quick spin around the block. I'll show you how she runs. Sure hope that suction cup mount holds. I've never used it before.
Transmission shifts nice and smooth. Clutch feels good. I had feared the uh, suction cup did not hold. Those things really do suck. No pun intended. But anyway, here we go again.
So anyway guys, there you have it. There's a uh, in-depth walk around tour and drive of my somewhat new to me 2000 Ford F250 XLT Super Duty. 7.3 liter power stroke, ZF6 manual transmission. Uh, probably not one of the better review videos on YouTube. Uh, in fact, I don't think I've ever even done a video, a review video on any of my pickup trucks. But uh, hopefully this is enough to uh, hold you guys off. I know I had quite a few people asking for a video on it. And uh, these trucks are getting harder and harder to find in, you know, decent condition, especially with the ZF6 and the 7.3. And uh, I don't have any plans to get rid of this truck. I mean, unless hell really, really freezes over. But uh, at this point in my life, the big investments I'm making are the ones that I'm going to, you know, hang on to for a very long time. So the trailer and the truck, you know, they're going to last me a very long time. With proper maintenance, there's no reason I shouldn't be able to make them last 30 years easily. Um, you know, these trucks have a good re reputation. The 7.3 liter engine is very reliable with proper maintenance. And there's just not a whole lot to go wrong with them, aside from your occasional sensors and leaks and whatnot. Um, I mean, at least compared to a newer 6.0 or 6.4 or 6.7 power stroke. Uh, I just like keeping things simple, and I love the sound of that 7.3. So I'll keep up on the maintenance, and uh, we'll see how far I can push this thing as far as miles go. And uh, I think it'll look good pulling that trailer with a John Deere 60 and a Ford 4000 on it eventually. At least that's the plan. Um, and it has served me pretty well so far in the nine months I've had it, so I can't wait to see what places I'll go with it and what kind of loads I'll haul with it. And... I just love that classic, you know, Ford Super Duty look. When I think of a Ford truck, this is what I imagine. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I think uh, I'm either going to run out of GoPro battery or we're going to run out of daylight here pretty soon. So I'm going to end the video here. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the truck and uh, see what uh, kind of upgrades and stuff you think I ought to do to it. Uh, like I said, not planning to do anything crazy right now. That'll come over time. But uh, I may make a video series when I start doing upgrades to it. I'm not sure. Um, it's just kind of a long-term project. I'm not doing anything crazy with it anytime soon. But anyway, thank you guys for your support. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, have a good one.